Hi, I'm Chet Haas, an engineer on the Android team at Google. I gave a talk with Romain Guy at Google I.O. recently called A Moving Experience, in which we talked about various cartoon animation techniques that you could apply to user interfaces. One of those techniques is called squash and stretch. And we're going to show a demo today that shows some of that, as well as another technique that, that kicks in called exaggeration. So the idea with squash and stretch is that objects in the real world deform to some extent, especially when they hit, say, a wall. If a body hits a wall or hits the ground going very fast, it's not going to stay in exactly the same shape that it was before it hit that unmoving object. Um, so maybe it's good if you want your objects to have more of a real world feel or more organic and natural feel to actually give them some elements of this stretchability as well. Um, and the other element is exaggeration, which is um, the idea from cartoons is you want to make it very obvious what's going on and also add a playful aspect. So not only would things deform slightly, but maybe they would deform much more than that just to exaggerate and enhance the effect and really let the user know exactly what's going on. So let's see how this works in a demo. We have a very simple demo where when I click on the button, the button is going to fall down to the bottom of the screen with gravity. Um, but before it bounces back up, we've got this feeling that the button is, is of this more elastic and rubbery uh, material. And so when it hits the ground, it's actually going to hear a little bit and squash and stretch out before finally snapping back and then um, bouncing back up to its starting position. Um, I've enabled a menu item so we can slow this thing down so we can see it in a little bit more glorious detail. And you'll notice that we're actually deforming the button as it falls as well. So it's not just when it hits the, uh, the floor at the bottom of the screen, but also as it's falling, the object is actually stretching out according to gravity a little bit. It's very subtle. It's hard to catch um, when it's running at full speed, but it also indicates to the user the subtle aspect of this button is interacting physically more with its environment <laughs> than buttons typically do. Uh, so let's take a look at the code. It's actually fairly straightforward animation code using object animators uh, and property values holders to animate these things in sequence. So first of all, we calculate the animation duration uh, based on whether we've enabled the, the scaling uh, option there so that we can see the animation run um, really slowly. Uh, we set the pivot point. This is not necessary, but it made some of the code a little bit simpler um, so that we didn't have to sort of change the translation and, and uh, scale around a particular point. So we set the pivot point um, that all the scales will happen around uh, to the bottom of the object. And then we use property values holder to animate several properties on the same target object in parallel. We're going to animate the translation y as well as the scale x and scale y properties on the way down. So we're going to move the object down. And as we move it, we're going to stretch it out in y and we're going to squish it in in x uh, as it goes. Um, we're going to create the down animation with a single object animator using these three property values holder objects. We're going to set an interpolator to an accelerate interpolator because we want it to look like it's reacting to gravity and actually going faster the further down it falls. Uh, and then we're going to set the duration according to the duration we calculated before. Once we hit the bottom, then we're going to stretch out in x and squash down in y like a rubbery object might if it hits such a hard thing as a floor. So we're going to use, again, property values holders to animate scale x and scale y in parallel. The stretch animation is going to use those property values holders uh, directly. We're going to set a repeat count or repeat mode. So we want it to squash and stretch out, and then we want it to snap back to where it was. So it's the same animation running in reverse according to the repeat count and repeat mode here. We're going to set an interpolator of decelerator. So as it stretches out, I wanted this feeling of the rubbery uh, material having this tension. The further out it goes, the slower it's going to go until it finally reaches the end and then snaps back. And as it snaps back, it's going to use the reverse of deceleration. So it's going to accelerate, which is what, again, this elastic or rubbery object would do. Uh, and then we're going to animate back to the top. Um, so again, we're just animating translation y and scale x and scale y, basically the reverse of what we did before, including using a decelerator to give the effect of pulling up against gravity and then slowing as it reaches the top of the curve, ready to go again. We're going to use an animator set to put these things together. We're going to play them in sequence. So first we animate down, then we stretch and squash out, repeat that back to where it was, and then we run the up animation. And that's it. Thanks.